my name is Eric with Brunswick Firearms Reviews. Today we will be talking about the Walther PD380. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. This is how it comes. Hard case, plastic. Uh, there's two slide locks here on top. There's also, you can see, yep, right there. There's one on each side so you can actually put a lock in so this you would not be able to open it. Should qualify for TSA specs, so um, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and open her up. And there it is, the Walther PD380. Pretty cool gun. Uh, you can see the safety flags in there, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the flag, make sure we are unloaded, which that's what the flag's in there for. I do like to always to look, feel myself and look. Let's go ahead and pull the mag, yep. So one thing I noticed, um, racking this gun right out the, the box here, the, it is very easy to rack. Um, I do like that, especially with these deep serrations. Um, the serrations are really deep on the front and back, kind of like the Springfield Echelon. Um, that really helps getting that grip on this on this firearm. I mean, I can sit there and do it. You can see I'm basically holding it two fingers. Uh, very easy to rack. So I do like that. Even when the hammer is down, it's still easy to rack. So I do like that. I do also notice there is no slide release on this firearm. There's no slide le release or lock. Uh, there is a slide lock, but it is by the magazine. When you have it in, it'll keep it back. So the only way to get this slide to to move forward is to or to release is you have to drop the mag, push back, and then it will go forward. So there is no uh, slide release, as you can see on either side of this firearm. Uh, there is a thumb safety. This is ambidextrous, so uh, thumb safety on both sides. You can see here, in here. And as you can see, when I push the safety down, you can see it moving there. Um, it, it, does not, um, it does not have a decocker on it. So, well, let's see if it does, if it has a block. So yes, it does. So when you put it in safety, you should be able to fire this gun just like that and it will block it from firing uh, in the safety position. But you do have to dry fire with it in the safety position to drop that hammer. To, so basically it's kind of like a manual decocker, I guess. Uh, some of the guns, when you put them in safety, it'll automatically flip the hammer back up. This one, you do have to pull the trigger while it's in safety to, to decock it. Uh, so not a bad feature, pretty cool. Um, the slide release, or I'm sorry, the magazine release is, is built into the trigger guard here so you could be again this is ambidextrous so you could be on either side basically this little portion you can see it moving right there so this will just slide down you can do it on either side um, and that's how you would remove the magazine so when the magazine's in i just take my finger press down on that on that tab right there and uh you can see the magazine will come out it does come with two magazines they are looks like they're two four six eight round magazine so this would be an eight plus one uh, which is nice because with the plus one this is a double action and single action so you can you know it, it's great it should be good for rapid firing as well as carrying it with the hammer down so but it's got the three dot sight it looks like yes so the back sight here it's it is adjustable you can see the little pinholes here and there should be a tool in here so it's in this little bag. See if you can see it without the glare. Uh, that there it is right there. Let me go ahead and take it out because it's I can see the lights from the camera. Uh, but that is what you would use to uh, adjust those sights. So you would just put it in just like that. Let's see if you can see it past my fingers. Then you can adjust it up and down. Now the front sight is not adjustable. So the rear sight is adjustable but the front sight is not. So let me go ahead and put this little guy back in because it's fairly small, I don't want to lose it. Uh, I'll go ahead and look underneath here and see what else comes with this guy. Of course the manual's in here. The manual will help you, uh, show you how to break the gun down, which we're gonna go over uh, how to field strip this firearm. Um, but that'll go over it. Also the warranty information will be in there. There is a lock, it is a cable system lock. I do have one here already open. Because uh, this is a brand new gun. I don't want to open that pack, uh, but I'll show you how to use that towards the end of the video All right, so also just to let you guys know again as in all my videos I do have the Wheeler gauge here to tell us what the trigger pull is the length of the trigger pull 
uh, for uh, the length of the trigger pull, the reset position for rapid fire, and also this gauge right here will tell us what the weight of the trigger pull is. And we'll go over that as well. So let me go ahead and show you how to, how to field strip this firearm. On the firearm to take down here, you would see one on each side. So it's kind of similar to the Glock. The Glock has a real small one. These are a little bit bigger. Even though they are bigger, I do have sometimes a little bit of difficulty holding them down to do it. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you how I do it. Um, but let's go ahead. So basically what I do is I put my hand on it just like I do in the video of the Glock. I wrap my fingers around the top. I pull the barrel back to slide just a little bit. And then I'll grab those tabs. I will pull down and then push forward. And as you can see, it comes right off. Um, looks like it's lubed up really good. There is actually a lot of lube in here. Uh, it does look like it's pretty good quality lube too. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I probably would wipe it down a little bit. I don't know if you can see in the camera. Maybe you can see it. It is gooped up on it just a little bit. So I would probably just kind of wipe that down a little bit. Um, but that's, that's, that's nice that it comes lubed like that. Um, all right, so how do you break down or how do you take out the guide rod and the guide rod spring and the barrel to clean it? Very simple. Take your slide, rotate it upside down. You can see the open area now is facing up. Right here is the guide rod and spring. So basically you're just going to oh, press forward and it's shot out. So let me go around and pick it up. So there's the guide rod in the spring after picking it up after I shot it out the gun onto the floor. Uh, but there it is right here. So now you will be able to remove the barrel. Basically you're going to slide it up and out, kind of like a 45 degree angle uh, outwards. Uh, and when you pull this spring out, the guide rod, you can see that, let's make sure we are correct here, yes. See if I can get on the camera. So you can see the, the black end here, the little cap at the very end is smaller than the other end. The other end is a lot bigger uh, than, than this end. So the smaller one is the one that would go towards the front of the barrel, the front of the slide into this top hole here. Now I say top hole, but remember I've got the slide turned upside down. Slide is usually that way. This is upside down because we're disassembling it and uh, it, getting ready to reassemble it. But that's how you would break it down. You can, you, now you can get in here, you can clean, you can get down into all your fire mechanisms. You can see down in the mag well, uh, but you can get in there and clean that gun real good. Clean your guide rod spring, clean your barrel. Um, but yeah, so that's how you would break it down. So to put it back together, again, you would take your slide and hold it upright. I say upright, it's actually upside down. This is upright. Uh, we're gonna flip it upside down so your hole is down here in the bottom. We're going to take the barrel, make sure these are guys right here, these little arms are up facing upwards. And we're going to slide it into that bottom hole of the slide, just like that. We're going to drop it, and then we're just going to press it back till it seats in place. Now, without that guide rod and spring in place, if I were to turn this over, that barrel would fall out. So keep it upside down, just like this, unless you put your finger and hold it in place, then you can flip it over. But be sure you hold it in place because that barrel will fall out. Again, small end of the guide rod is going to go to the top hole. Again, I say top hole, but it's because it's upside down, so it's on top. And then we're just going to kind of push forward, and it's going to push right and lock in place. Now, once you get that guide rod and spring back in place, the barrel won't fall out. It, it'll hold it in place. Now, to put it back on, you can see there are little notches here that go down. If Hopefully, if you could see on the inside, I'll try to get the lighting right. But down on the side, inside, it is, there's a, it's grooved out on both sides. And then on the rails, you can see here these little tabs. These rails are going to line up into those, and then it'll slide right on. So you're going to go all the way from the front. You can see right here, I got them lined up now. And now we're basically just going to push it on back, and we're going to push it back until it goes back. So sometimes it gets a little sticky there, so that's why I give it a little bit of force back. Now you can see that the hammer is cocked position, so we're going to release it down. Also, I want to point out, I do really like this grip, especially with the magazine in place. 
I've got all four fingers on there. There are semi finger grooves here, but the texture is really nice all the way around. And there's also, uh, you know, finger and thumb placement. You can see how it's kind of, maybe you can see, it's kind of indented there and it's indented there, or there's an indention there. That's for your placement of, of you know, your, your finger, your trigger finger and your uh, thumb on the other side. So it's, it's actually a really comfortable gun. I really like that. There is a rail on the front. There's a Picatinny rail. So again, you can put a red, or uh, I'm sorry, a laser or flashlight or a combo or what have you. This is not optic ready, so you cannot put one on this model. There is, I'm not sure if they came out with an optic ready PD380 yet, um, but this one is not. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's a great gun. Let's go ahead and check to see what the trigger pull, the trigger length, the reset position, the weight is of this firearm. So what I'm gonna do in this scenario, again, to the good old discussion of dry firing, not dry firing a firearm, I am going to use snap caps just because I don't like to dry fire my guns, even though they say the new ones are fine. I just, that's just me. You know, you guys do what you want. Uh, I just can't see repetitious fire, dry fire gun, how it can be good for it. Um, I'm sure it's okay to do it every now and then, but I don't know. I just, I disagree with it. But again, personal opinions, everybody's got them. Let's go ahead and load one in. So I'm going to rack it. So now we have one in the chamber. You can see it's cocked. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it fairly close to the camera. I, I will um, fire this gun. There is a snap cap in there. That snap cap is designed to catch all that momentum for the firing pin and all that stuff in there. And it absorbs that momentum to um, preventing damage to the mechanisms and stuff internally of that firearm. But with it in, we can dry fire safely now. So let's go ahead and see what this trigger pull length is. So here we go. So it's not real bad at all. Um, now the hammer was down. So the trigger weight is going to be a lot, lot less. But the trigger pull is not really that long at all. Um, so let's go ahead and get another one in. And well, I got to put one in. And let me go ahead and get one in. Also, I noticed when I'm putting the snap caps in, that spring is really light. It don't take much at all to put one in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry fire this one more time. But... I'm going to do it with the hammer down. So now let's see how it is with the hammer down. Um, so it's 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 a little stout. Um, it is a little tough. I'm going to guess that trigger pulls probably a, at least seven pounds. Um, we'll, I'm, I'm going to test it here in a minute and see what it actually is. All right, so let's go now. I'm going to test the uh, reset position. Let's get that one out. And I've already got one in it. So there is another one in, as you can see, the trigger still pulls. So now I can dry fire or release the uh, trigger slowly to see where that reset position is. So to give us the ability to get a second shot off. So here we go. I'm gonna let it out slowly. And there's the click. And there would be your second fire. So uh, reset's not that long. It's pretty nice. I would say medium, maybe a little less than medium. Uh, probably not, it's probably less than that. It's really not a, a, a long reset position, but the trigger pull, the initial trigger pull is fairly long, just so you know. So once you get past that first trigger pull, rapid firing is, should be pretty cool on this gun. Plus every time the hammer's gonna be down, so the, the trigger weight will be a lot lighter instead of doing the first initial pull with the hammer down. So now what I'm gonna do, I still have a snap cap in there where I haven't injected it. This is double action. So let's go ahead and leave it in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this guy here. This, this is made by Wheeler. This is your sensor. We're gonna put that on the trigger. We're gonna pull back. It's gonna tell me what my weight is. So that'll give us an idea of the trigger pull. And I like to do it twice. That way I can get a, a medium between the two of them. That'll give me a better accurate reading. And as always, I always say this particular unit, I do like to get it about midway on the trigger. Sometimes it's slightly above the midway. I seem to get more of an accurate reading than if I'm too low or too high. So let me go ahead and my trigger. Let me go ahead and reset that. So right now I've got it on the trigger. So now we're going to pull. So yeah, that's uh, right at seven, it looks like 7.15. So let's get another one off. All right, so here we go. 
And that one was around 7.6. So 7.15, 7.6. So we're going about 7.4, 7 and a half. It's pretty stout. Now, let me pull the hammer back. We're going to see what it is with the hammer back. So I've got it on. Let's go ahead and pull. So I've got about a four. Let's do it again. Yeah, so about three, three point six somewhere in there. So let's go ahead and do it again. I got it on. Yeah, so I'm getting about a three and a half to four with the uh, in the cocked position and firing it. So I'm getting about a seven and a half, almost an eight on the trigger pull with the hammer down. With the hammer open, I'm uh, again I'm getting three and a half, four pound trigger. So um, not too bad. Pretty nice, uh, but overall, I think it's a great gun. I do like it. Uh, racks easy, serrations are deep. The only thing is, there's not a slide lock. If the magazine's out, it's not gonna stay out, which no gun will. But um, with this one, you must have the magazine in to lock the slide back. Where a lot of most of your guns, they do have a slide locked and release on it so if the magazine's out you can actually pull the rack you can rack that gun and rack that slide back and hold it back with the slide lock this one does not have that just so you know um, but otherwise great little gun made by Walter the PD 380 I hope you got some good info out of this uh, before I go just to show you the uh, go ahead and lock it back and get that last snap cap out again it stays back because the magazine is in so let me go ahead and pull it out Again, before I forget, uh, cable lock system, you basically would open it up, drop it through your mag well, and then you would lock it back together, making this gun unusable. So that's how that would work. So, all right. <clears throat> so again, the Walter P3, PD380. I hope you got some good information out of this video. If you did, feel free uh, to like, share, uh, and subscribe to the video, especially subscribe. That's what keeps our channel going. Also, if you have questions, feel free to message me. You can drop a comment down below. Also, if you would, maybe drop a comment of where you're watching this video from, uh, you know, if you're what state you're from or whatever. Uh, also, if you've ever shot one, these are fairly new. So if you, but if you have one, the PD 380 and you've shot it, let us know how, how you thought about it when you shot it uh, down in the comments. But anyways, I appreciate everybody watching. Again, my name's Eric with Brunswick Firearms Reviews.